Hey guys, welcome to this section on Excel formulas. In this section, we'll be looking at what formulas are and how it is created in Microsoft Excel. So before we get into that, I want us to understand how this sheet works. Okay, so if I come to this area of the sheet, if I come here, maybe I come to H12 and I type, let's take for instance, I type 89. Okay, so if I want to reference this particular cell in another cell, maybe in K14, uh, all I need to do is to put an equal to sign. And if I type H12, can you see that there is a blue icon around this number here showing me that I'm actually referring to this particular cell. So I'm saying equal to H12, meaning that I'm saying give me whatever you have, whatever I have typed in H12. And so what I've typed in H12 is 89. So if I press the enter, you can see 89 there. So the same thing applies to, if I come down to this uh, F15, maybe I type 900, I can go to anywhere in any of this, in this particular worksheet, I can come anywhere and type and reference that cell. So if I come here and say equal to F15, if I type F15, whether it's in capital letter or not, you can see the blue icon showing me that I am referencing these particular cells from 010. So if I press enter, you can see 900. If you look at what we've just done, now 900 is 900 here. Yeah? What if I delete this 900? If I delete this 900 and I click outside, you can see that is zero, meaning that F15 that was having 900 is no longer having 900 again. So if I come to this area and I type maybe 400 again, and I click outside, you can see 400 is showing in 010. What it means is that F15 is being referenced in 010. So this is what we refer to as referencing in Microsoft Excel. So let's get into the formula and see how we can create formulas in Microsoft Excel. So to create a formula, we need to use the equal to sign, which I've just shown you. So what I need to do here is that I don't want to type the next estimate. I want a situation whereby every month we'll be making at least 2,500. The previous month, which is January, plus the to add means you I need to put the plus, plus 2,500. If you look at my formula bar here, you can see I4 plus 2,005. So that similarly means whatever value I have in January plus 2,005. So if I press enter, you can see it's giving me 2,500. So what I want is, I want a situation whereby this will be applied to all the months. So we are expecting an increase of 2,005 in all the months. So March will not be what? If you click on March, it will not be J4 plus 2,005, which is uh, this 32,500 plus 2,005. And that will give me what? the 35,000. So I just use my auto field to continue and I'll get to December. So you can see I've gotten this. So let's do the same estimate now for freight. I can come here and say the freight plus, I'm pressing my the plus on my keyboard plus let's say 400. Let's say we are, we are expecting an increase of 400 every month. So I'll press this, press my enter my keyboard and use my auto field to do the rest. So the same thing applies to cost of goods. I can call me and see equal to, and I'll select this, I6 plus, let's say the cost of goods will increase by 2000. And I'll press my enter button and I'll just do use my auto field to do the rest. The same thing applies to expenses, which will be equal to the previous expenses plus, let's say 150. Okay, so and I'll press enter, then I'll come here, click and drag down. So this is how we can just use the auto field to create our own uh, data. So we've been able to create a the new set of data using uh, knowledge of auto field and also our knowledge of formula. Again, a formula in Microsoft Excel is just for us to put equal to sign for us to create the formula. So this is how it works. So for me to get my profit, I need to get the total expenses first of all. So I'll say total expenses. So what would be my total expenses? 
So my total expenses will be freight plus cost of goods plus other expenses which we make in the office. Okay. I5 plus I6 plus I7. Okay. So if I do this, I'll have the total expenses. But this is not an efficient way of doing it. So the best way to do it is to come up with a function. Okay, so is to use an inbuilt function in Microsoft Excel called sum. So all I would just need to do is to come here and put the equal to sign and type sum. Now please use the one given to you by Microsoft Excel. Don't use your own. So I'll I'll just I haven't typed sum. I'll double click on sum here. And I'll highlight on this, this, and this. Now, if you look at the formula bar, can you see it gave me from I5 colon I7. Now, that colon is what to refer to as a range. So, I'll explain what a range is. This brings me to the concept of range. What is a range? If I have values typed here, let's see, I have 38, 30, let's see, I have 30, I have 39, I have... 90 typed here and i want to add up all these values rather than come here and putting equal to and typing this then plus this plus this i can use the range to do this so what does range what is range saying range is saying you want to take everything horizontally or everything vertically now the range has its usefulness it's not used in all situations there are certain situations you shouldn't use range. In a situation whereby you want to add everything on the same row or on the same column, you can use range. But if there are some values or there are some data like what you have here, sales is different. So we can only use range from right down. Supposing we have another set of data here that is not similar, we cannot use range. So range has its usefulness. And for us to use range, what is range in Microsoft Excel? Range is just your colon. Okay, if you're using your colon, it means you're actually selecting everything on that row or everything on that column. So if I come here and I put equal to and I type H13 or I select H13 and I put my range colon, okay, and I select G. Now, can you see selecting everything? So it's giving me everything. It's selecting everything from... Um, H13 to J13. So that's what a range means. The answer you're seeing around this shows that those values have been selected. So that's range for us. Range is taking everything on the column, on the same column or the same row. So that's what your range does in Microsoft Excel. So let's get back to what we're doing before we dived, before we came down here. So if you look at what we've just done now, so what this means, this is means sum in bracket, give me the values in I5 to I7. So even those in I6 were added. So that's why you can see the blue um, mark showing around those values that we have just added together. So if you press the enter button, it will give us the result. So rather than do this for January, February, March, and to December, all I need to do is to do it for one, Click on the auto field there. You can see my cursor. Please make sure the cursor becomes dark. Okay, before you can run your auto field. Then click on it and drag. So having dragged it, you can see now that we have these values showing. So these are the expenses for each of the month. And we just did it once. Now that we have gotten the total expenses, then it's time for us to get a profit. So I can come in and say profit. So profit will be sales minus the total expenses. So in this situation, your range does not apply. We have to type manually. So I type my equal to trying to create a new formula in I10. So what I'll need to do is to select my sales, which is I4 minus the total expenses. And that will give me 8,800 for January. And if I drag, I'll see the profit we'll be making. So as the year goes on, we'll be making less and less profit. So this is what we have as our budget. Okay, so this is for profit. Now, the next thing I want to look at is the tax. Say, for instance, I want to calculate my tax. So I want to calculate the tax that will be paid. Okay, so what I will need to do is to, first of all, put my equal to, then select this value here, 
then put an asterisk meaning i'm multiplying it by my tax take for instance my tax is five percent the tax that i need to pay is five percent so all i need to do is to type 0 0.05 which is five percent so five percent is 0 0.05 and i'll press the enter button that will give me what what will be paying as tax so if i drag also i'll see the total tax will be paying so this is how we create such budget in Microsoft Excel. Now, beyond, before we come to a close, let us add the label on top. Let us add the label on top. So I'll come to this particular row and I'll right click and I'll click on insert. Again, do the same thing. I just want two additional rows to be added. And here we have it. Okay, so this is it here with a bigger space. Now I can come up here and type budget. Okay, so this is my budget estimate. And if you look at it, our sheet does not look beautiful. In our next class, we'll look at how we can format this Excel sheet to make it look beautiful so that this will look beautiful and we'll format the number so that it will be done properly. But before we go, let's just add a total here so that I'll just let's add total by typing. I'll come here and just type equal to and just type sum. OK, I'll select from January to December. Press enter. Yeah, I have my total sales from January to December. If I don't want to click and drag again, all I need to do is to come here and make sure my cursor is um, darker. Okay, look at the cross. The cross has changed from the big white cross to a thick black cross. Just double click. And here you can see it has given me the answer. So the same thing applies to expenses. I may just decide to drag down and delete the zero. So this is my total for both expenses, the profit, and the tax that we will be paying. So this is how we can create a simple budget. In our next class, we'll look at how we can format this to make it look better. Thank you.